At least after the show. Huh? <laughs> yeah. I was trying to think of some kind of play on words for gin and juice with funnel cake, and I came up with nothing. But maybe next episode I'll have something. Oh. Well, that's funny. It says it closed on the 30th, but it says it's open. Oh, well, then. That's... Google Maps lies. That's what you're checking. Yeah. Well, kind of both. Yeah. I mean, the fa- maybe the fairground is open because I know they do all sorts of stuff there. Yeah, maybe it's saying the fairgrounds is open as opposed to, yeah, that would make a lot of sense. So what are you guys writing? What am I writing? Uh, little fragments. I'm trying to come up with new stuff for, there's the uh, Maricopa Slam on Saturday that I'm on the list for that. So I was hoping to do something new and shiny because, you know, um, for a lot of slams, well, a lot of these slams recently, I haven't taken out the greatest hits yet. So, well, that's uh, good. Yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to wallop people with the greatest hits. It's like, <laughs> okay, now now that I've tricked you into thinking that all my stuff's crap, here's <laughs> something that went to the National Poetry Slam. <laughs> <laughs> Who's hosting? Um, Thomas, I think it's... I know his name is Thomas. I don't know his last name. Okay. I know too many Thomases, and the That's one serious. I'm thinking of is like a guy from 20 years ago, so I'm yeah. pretty sure it's not him. Uh, have you done Ghost? That that's yes. from yeah that the uh, that, that he does host the, the Ghost guy? too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I saw your video. I saw your Ghost video. Oh, which one? Do not recall. Oh, okay. I didn't even know there was more than one. Um, I have a couple videos from the Ghost, so okay. there's. One about secret menus. There's one about my stove that I didn't like. Okay. Stove. Well, check out Ghost Poetry Show on Facebook for some readings from Patrick Hare. What other readings are going on? I Following the Mesa Book Festival, going mm-hmm. backwards a little bit, uh, there will be a poetry showcase at the Nile Coffee Shop. Myself will be there as well as my fiancé and some other youth poets. So we'll be doing some poems, tabling. There'll be coffee. It's right after the Mesa Book Festival. Like we already said, downtown Mesa is gorgeous that time of year. It's all cutesy and small town looking. I didn't use gorgeous there, ironically. It is it, it is cutesy and small town looking. It's kind of cute. Um, so yeah, come check it out. It should be a lot of fun. But I've been writing quite a bit, actually. So I'm about halfway through my next poetry manuscript. Um, at least the rough of it. It's mas- I think I'm going to call it masculinity in the American West, um, in the modern American West. I always forget modern. It's a very important part of the title. I love a long title, especially just to trigger Bob, our publisher. <laughs> he loves when the title goes all the way down the spine, and I'm just going to keep doing it. So uh, <laughs> and it's also great for the SEO. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to keep... You'll never have the world record. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Bill's going to have that one yeah. for a long time. Um, for a long time coming. Someone's going to have to take it from him on purpose. He should submit that to Guinness, uh, see what happens. But I'm writing Masculinity in the Modern American West. I kind of have it set up like a trail book for now, um, kind of advancing the idea of the drawings that I had in my first book and making them a little bit more interactive. I also like the idea of the trail notebooks and the kind of journals that I've been seeing and like making a journal that somebody else fills out, I think is a really intriguing kind of pocket in writing. Um, so I kind of wanted to pull some of those things into literature. So I have a few interesting pieces that are like, or I think they're interesting. That, that was kind of self-indulgent for me to say that. Um, but there, um, I have some pieces where like I wrote this poem at this location, you know, here's a little map to it and then space for somebody to write something of their own from that same location or to write a reflection on that location or on my piece about that location. So kind of intermingling some of the interactivity of a trail journal with something poetic. So, yeah, that's kind of the idea so far. Um, It's going to be a nightmare to actually put in in through a design (laughs) program and actually get out the other side. But the last book was a nightmare too, so why should this one be any different? Well, at least for that whole notes part, you can... uh... Copy and paste a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Just leave it blank. No, you gotta have lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta have lines. You gotta have lines. That would be like no, because <laughs> a blank a blank page doesn't invite someone to fill it. It's scary. I think any artist 
would resonate with the fact that a blank page is scary. So I think providing someone with a prompt, a background, illustrations, lines, and then asking them to express themselves yeah. is a lot less intimidating than just being like, blank page. <laughs> what do you see at this location? Yeah. And also, I really like Mad Libs. So I'm pushing towards writing a short manuscript that would definitely fall under the uh, science fiction, fantasy, and oddities portion of the uh, Brick Cave stuff. But um, I'm trying to push towards like making poem, uh, making a poem playable or like fully interactive. And I'm trying to work with a way to do that that isn't just hijacking an existing game. So like, or in using the results of that game to create a poem. So that's a thing that I'm playing with as well. And I'm not having very much success with it. But uh, when I do have success with it, you'll be the first to know. I started AI generating some poems. I did, and with some art to match. I did one uh, about a full English breakfast that came out pretty hysterical. I wish I had it on me. It's just bizarre. It, the sentimentality that the AI gave towards the English breakfast is fascinating. So the way they programmed the AI must it must somehow relate words to like a sentimental weight. Like, cause it gave sentimentality to whatever I would plug into the generator. So if you plugged in like shoelace, it wouldn't just talk about the shoelace because it was a poem generator. So it would try to almost pontificate about a shoelace. Well, so it's like those uh, recipes you get online where you got to read seven paragraphs about, you know, going to your grandmother's house and she would bake you special cookies and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Where it's, 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 it's almost trying to feign what it thinks a poem is. You know, I once, I once read that like a poem is something that says a complicated thing simply, right? So when a poem, if a poem were to talk about a shoelace, it wouldn't be to talk about shoelaces. It would be to talk about like the anxiety of working class struggles in middle America. You know what I mean? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like when William Carlos Williams talked about the red wheelbarrow, it wasn't about a red wheelbarrow. It wasn't literally about a red wheelbarrow. And that aspect is what the poem's completely missing. Like when it's being sentimental about breakfast, it's genuinely being sentimental about breakfast. It's not like an extended metaphor or analogy for a lost childhood or like a longing for a mother that was never gained. It's like, it's just, isn't butter gorgeous? Like it's really, really, <laughs> really interesting what comes out the other end of the AI. If these bangers and masks are going to shorten your lifespan by 50 years. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's really objective. It's really weird. The butter is yellow like the sun. It's like, so it, it it puts weight into like things like sun and rain and things that have like an inherent emotion or an inherent sentimentality. So I'd be curious to see how that was programmed to like what words have oh, a sentimentality so attached to them. Like how did it differentiate between how does it form the simile basically? Is something what I'm curious. Terminator is going to make you fall in love with him first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it's gonna turn into her oh he's so dreamy <laughs> <laughs> i would love to see the her terminator crossover where uh joaquin phoenix falls in love with arnold schwarzenegger i heard an am okay this is a fun podcast topic that i can run by you i'm full adhd right now i just got out of work guys so we're going okay. full speed ahead until bob tells me to stop 